Hi, in this video, we will try to understand how we can create digital outputs on Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W boards and how you can create a circuit around it. In order to experiment on this, we will try to simply connect an LED onto the output pin of Raspberry Pi Pico W. The purpose is to understand how you can create a circuit from a particular pin on Raspberry Pi Pico as well as how to write down a code for it. So, let's get started. Now, as explained before, every pin, which is a general purpose input output pin of Raspberry Pi Pico, can generate logic 1 and logic 0 signal. Logic 1 will be 3.3 volt and logic 0 will be 0 volt. So, first of all, let's try to understand what are the important function calls for this. So, let's look at this particular piece of code first. As you have already gone through the quick Python tutorial, I'll just simply skip to every single line. Please understand, this is not a code. These are the important declarations which are required to make any pin work as output and generate some signal onto it. So, first and most important thing that you require in your code is from machine import pin. Please understand, Python is highly case sensitive. So, from machine import should be all small caps, pin must have the P capital. So, this will basically import this pin class which deals with the pin functions of Raspberry Pi Pico. Then what you do is LED is equal to pin 25 comma pin dot out. Now, here LED is nothing but a variable name. It can very well be your name or my name or A1, A2, A3, LED1, LED2, LED3, anything like that. So, this is purely and this is simply a name that you will use to declare your variable. In case if in your project, if you are using a buzzer, then maybe you want to call it as a buzzer or maybe you want to call it as something else, just like that. So, this is the name or variable name then this is the name of the class that you have imported okay so it should remain as it is led equal to pin p capital i n into the bracket the first thing you will mention is your gp general purpose pin number for example let's say 25 is mentioned here so, pin number 25 means, mm, 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 there it is, GP25, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 26, 27, 28. Okay. It seems we don't have a 25 GP25 pin. So, the example is much valid. It won't do anything. So, it should be any one of those pins. Rather, what I'll do is, I'll simply edit that pin. And make it 26. So everything is relative. As mentioned before, LED is your variable name, pin is your class name, this is your GP pin number, and then this is also your class name, and this is an object of that class. Essentially, what it means is you are declaring a variable LED which when you refer to in the code relates to pin number 26 and you are making pin number 26 to work as output pin. It doesn't matter if you want to use a single pin or if you want to use multiple pins. Whenever you have to use any pin, you will have to do this declaration all of this once for every pin. So, if I want to use 10 pins, I will have to write down LED1 equal to pin, let's say 1 comma pin dot out. LED2 is equal to pin, let's say 2 comma pin dot out and so on and so forth. Next is LED dot value. So, here because now LED is a variable created out of this pin class. So, all the functions of this pin class will be applicable or available for LED. So, LED.value1 essentially means write 1 or logic high onto that pin 
an LED dot with a value 0 means right 0 means logic low onto that pin. These four lines are important and whatever code you create, that code will be created using one of these four functions for the GPIO interface. Now, this is the basics about the coding whenever you want to use any pin as an output pin. Now, let us try to understand how you create an interfacing diagram for it. Now, for that sake, I will use this tool called EasyEDA, which is a very user friendly tool. You can go through it anytime. And I have a Raspberry Pi Pico W board over here with all the available pin counts. So, I would not make a mistake again. As stated before, if you want to connect anything, to any pin of Raspberry Pi Pico, you have to make sure that you have to understand that it is only going to generate 3.3 volt as an output signal. So, if you are only generating 3.3 volt, then the most basic component that you can use an out, as an output device is LED. Let us try to see how you can interface or connect an LED with the Raspberry Pi Pico board. So, just take an LED. I will take an LED and I will connect it to any general purpose pin. For example, in our example, if we are assuming pin 26, then let us follow pin 26. So, you can connect pin 26 directly to this LED. And the second pin of LED, as per your consideration or assumption, should go to ground. But if you create a circuit like this, it will burst your LED or it will burn your LED. Why? Because although it generates only 3.3 volt at output voltage, the LED itself will try to gain maximum current after its forward voltage drop is covered. So, every single time without fail, whenever you are creating or connecting LED to any microcontroller, Raspberry Pi or anything, you have to make sure that you connect a current limiting resistor in series. Many people also have a doubt whether I should connect the resistor before LED or after LED. Believe me, the current flows based on the total resistance of the series circuit, fundamentally. So, it simply does not matter if you connect the resistor here or here. What matters is you must connect the resistor and what another thing that matters is the value of the resistor. As a thumb rule, what we do is we restrict the current going through LED, which should be less than 10 milliamperes. If I simply follow the Ohm's law, then with 3.3 volt output voltage, I need a minimum of 330 Ohm resistor. You can use a greater value above 330 as well. But if you restrict it to 330 ohm, then 3.3 volt divided by 330 equals to 10 milliampere. Your current will be always less than 10 milliampere and the LED will turn on. You can, as a thumb rule, people use 1K, people use 1.5K, it depends. At all, the purpose whenever you connect LED with microcontroller is to give an indication, just an indication. So it just doesn't matter how a big resistor you use. As long as you can see the LED turning on, this is good to go. Now, if I want to create a program to blink this LED on and off, let us try to write the actual code. Now, I do not have the Raspberry Pi Pico connected, so let me just connect it quickly with my computer and then I will write the code over here. So, I will simply delete whatever is existing there and I will take a new code. Now, I am connecting the Pico board to Raspberry Pi or Pico board to my PC. Once it is connected, you can simply select it from here. Okay. Now, what I will do is, I will simply write down import line first. So, what was that line? From machine import pin. From machine import pin. 
this was important next is the declaration of led so led is equal to pin and then into bracket 26 comma pin dot output just like that written over here pin dot out now if you want to turn it on and off continuously then you may need to give an delay in between so to give delay what i'll do is i'll import time so you can import time and write time dot slip or you can also write down from time import slip both of the functions will work and now you will write the code which is to be executed in real time or in infinite loop so for that sake what we do is we use an infinite loop while true and then led dot value one time dot slip one led dot value zero time dot slip one all the functions written according to this and now if you create a circuit like this then it will blink the led on and off so for now first what i'll do is i will simply save this file to raspberry pi pico give the name as main.py replace the existing file it will ask you to and then you can run your code from here now pin has no attribute output okay I think I am not coming out of my ordinal zone, so let's make it pin dot out. It was pin dot out. You might have noticed my mistake while making the video. So just play this button. And now the code is running. Now what I'm going to do is I will insert the Raspberry Pi Pico onto breadboard and then we will try to continue the connections and see if it works or not. Now what I'll do is, I have to try this LED blinking code. So I will simply open my USB camera. And to perform this experiment, we have the Pico W board. Now, if you look at my camera feed, for this experiment, what we have done is, we have taken the Raspberry Pi Pico board. A breadboard, few LEDs, I have this 330 ohm resistor and two connectors. Now what I'll do is I'll first simply insert this Raspberry Pi Pico board into the breadboard. Okay, just like that. You can see. And here I'll connect the USB cable. Now the board is connected. What I'll do is I'll simply keep it in one window. And now I will open the pinout over here. Now if you check the pinout, this is where pin number 40 is. We just use this one. So this is pin number 40. This is pin number 21. Then there is pin number 31 over here, which is our GP26 somewhere. And then we have pin number 38 over here, which will act as a ground. The USB cable will come from this way. So what I'll do is I'll arrange my circuit in this area. Arrangement of the circuit will be very simple. I'll use this multicolor LED which really looks cool. The smaller LED is cathode, larger one is anode. I'll insert the cathode into the blue power line over here. Then I'll have the resistor inserted from this pin to some other pin the opposite side that's it now what i have to do is the point of this resistor should go to gp26 which is pin number 31 i will literally count it now 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 and 31 that goes my gp26 and then I will use ground which is pin number 40, 39, 38 and I will connect this ground to this ground bus. That's all for my connections. All I have to do now is insert the USB cable 
and see what happens so this is now my board is powered on you can see the code is already working on for one second off for one second now this is a multicolor one i just found it to be looking different so i'm using it but if you want a plain visualization you can simply use a normal red led as you can see here now if you make changes to your code which i will do now with camera open at one side because it feels good nothing else then you can see the changes appearing over there so instead of time dot slip 1 i'll make it time dot slip 0 0.3 and here 0 0.3 so save this okay backend is not ready because it was disconnected now save it again and run it see so this is how you can make any external interfaces and start working with raspberry pi pico if i stop the code from here now if i close thony my code is still into the memory of raspberry pi pico and it is stored as main.py so all i need to do is i need to remove the power reconnect the power the code will start working let's try the multicolor one one last time it just looks good no matter how many years you spend on to this guys when the led starts blinking it really does feel good that's it for this video thank you for watching